we're going to look at a homogeneous system of equations in this example. We've been looking at equations of the form ax equals b. A homogeneous system of equations is simply that same equation, but with a b equal to the all zero vector. So here is our system of equations that we're going to work with. And you'll notice on the right side, each of these equations is equal to zero. So this is what we call a homogeneous system of equations. And we would like to solve this system of equations. So we're going to work with homogeneous systems of equations. Finding a solution to the equation is easy because we could just let x1, x2, x3 equal 0, and then we would have a solution to this system of equations. We'd have 0 equals 0 on each of these equations here. But that's just one part of the solution. In general, we would like to see if there's more than just this trivial solution to the equations. To do that, we can use the same approach we've been using to solve systems of equations. We form the augmented matrix. So I've taken the coefficients here from the first equation and put them in the first row of the augmented matrix. We do the same thing for the other equations. And now I can perform row operations on this augmented matrix to solve the equations. So I'm going to let equation 2 equal itself minus 2 times equation 1. because so I would like to get rid of this 2 here. And I can get rid of that 2 by subtracting off 2 times this element. And the same thing with the third equation. I'm going to let equation 3 equal itself plus 2 times equation 1, so I can get rid of this negative 2 here. So equation 1 remains unchanged in my augmented matrix. Equation 2 is transformed into this quantity. And equation 3 ends up the turning into the all zero row. Let's go ahead and let equation 2 equal the negative 1 times negative 1 eleventh times e2. Let's turn this a negative 11 into a 1. So if we do that, rows 1 and 3 are going to remain unchanged, but equation 2 will be multiplied by a negative 1 over 11. So that's what it looks like. We now have a 1 there, like we wanted. And row 3 is all zeros still. And then let's go ahead and let the first equation equal itself minus 3 times the second equation. Let's get this 0 in there. So this is what the first row looks like. 1, 0, a negative 4 plus 24 over 11, because I've multiplied this by a negative 3, essentially. The second row remains unchanged, and the third row remains unchanged. If I simplify this, just combine these terms, a negative 4 plus 24 over 11 is a negative 20 over 11, and then the other rows remain unchanged. So if I look at this now, I can see some interesting things. First of all, I see that the variables x1 and x2 are basic variables because there's a pivot in the first column and a pivot in the second column. So x1 and x2 are basic variables, so that makes x3 a free variable. I can write x1 in terms of x3 by looking at this first equation. x1 is equal to 20 over 11 times x3. Similarly, I can write down the solution for x2 by looking at this second equation. x2 is equal to 8 elevenths x3. So there is my solution to this homogeneous system of equations. It's a whole family of solutions. There's an infinite number of them. For every value of x3, we can compute x1 and x2 and write down a particular solution. For example, if x3 is 7, that means that x1 is equal to 140 over 11, and x2 is equal to 56 over 11. If we actually plug that in to the original system of equations, you can check that indeed our original coefficient matrix times this solution right here that we put in vector form, if you multiply this out, you do indeed get 0. So here is the solution to this system of equations. Just as a particular example, we've evaluated it for one value of x3, just to get a warm fuzzy that this indeed does give us the all zero vector when multiplied out. You can check it on your calculator, and it does. So in some ways, working with homogeneous systems of equations aren't any different than working with our regular systems of equations. We know that there is going to be at least the trivial solution, because x1, x2, x3 being 0 is always going to be a solution. We're usually interested, though, in finding the full solution to the systems of equations, and that's what we've done right there.